Back in 2008, I was pulled over in a traffic stop and found to be in possession of cocaine and a firearm. That traffic stop led to me being charged with eight different crimes. Possession with intent to distribute cocaine, possession of a firearm by a convicted felon, possession with intent to distribute cocaine while in possession of a firearm by a convicted felon, conspiracy to sell cocaine, reckless driving, driving on a revoked license, fourth offense, possession of a concealed weapon, and resisting arrest. I didn't know it then, but it was that very moment when I was pulled over that was gonna change my life forever. You couldn't imagine what I was thinking getting pulled over with those drugs and that gun in the car feeling like my life was completely over. It was either sink or swim at that point. It was either I was gonna weather whatever was gonna come next of this or I was gonna die. I may laugh and joke about a lot of things here on After Prison Show, but one thing I'll never joke about is what led me to be right here in front of you on YouTube, able to do these videos for your entertainment and also education. Getting locked up is a serious thing. I may make light of it now, but I went through one serious fucking ordeal just to be able to be here right now. It all started back in 2008 after I had lost a job. I tried to find other employment. It just wasn't working out. I had a criminal record. I justified it however I could for me to be able to go back to selling drugs, something I had done throughout much of my adult life. I was 26 years old at the time. I was still young, naive, in the mind of how serious the shit I was doing out there really was. I wanted to live the fast, easy life. I wanted the money to come to me. I didn't want to have to go work hard for the money. But now looking back on all of that, all that ever got me was seven years in prison. All that ever got me was my family giving up on me for seven years, having to cut ties with me because I was a constant failure. The black sheep of the family, the outcast, that family member who was always getting in trouble, always fucking up. When there's a person like that in your life, sometimes the easiest thing to do is to just let them go, to let them figure it out on their own. And that's what my family did. I'm not mad at them for that. All of this helped me find myself while I was locked up and figure out what I needed to do to try to make my life better. Back in 2008, I had just bought drugs and was on my way to go sell them when I got pulled over. I had a gun in my waistband, cocaine in my pocket, and I was driving a car that I wasn't even supposed to be driving. Not because it was stolen, but because I had no license to be driving it. So when I got pulled over, it was already probable cause, just me not having a license for these officers to be able to search the vehicle. They found the gun, they found the cocaine, and that led to the list of charges that I was facing. When they interrogated me, asking me what happened, I served myself up on a silver platter. I said, I purposely went to this city to buy these drugs and I was on my way back to this town to sell them. I said, I was the reason the gun was in the car and nobody else who was in the car knew anything. They were just along for the ride. The cops couldn't even believe I told them this stuff. They were expecting me to say, wait, we can call somebody. We can, I can get you some more drugs. I know where there's some guns at because nowadays everybody tells. They probably hadn't seen anything like this since they became cops. Somebody not willing to cooperate, only willing to give the cops themselves. I was making the ultimate sacrifice, knowing this was gonna cost me years of my life, knowing that I may never even see the free world again. This list of charges that I just told you about, conspiracy to sell cocaine, possession with intent to distribute cocaine, possession of a firearm by a convicted felon, possession of a firearm, while in possession of cocaine, all of these charges, I was thinking football numbers in my head. I'm gonna get 15, 20, 25 years for this. My life is over. That was all I was thinking. They charged me, they sent me to jail, and that's when I began to await the whole trial process. My lawyer came and seen me, told me I was fucked for making statements that I did, told me that the cops who were on my case were the head of narcotics and a gang task force officer who pulled me over. Just my luck, December 21st, 2008, when I was pulled over, it was a head of narcotics officer and a gang task force officer who pulled me up. They were just out working Christmas quota traffic stops and they caught me cocaine and a pistol coming right down the road. I'll never forget when I was being interrogated, they were walking me to the interrogation room and I walked by a room and I looked and I saw the cops and they were literally taking a picture with the cocaine and the gun 
standing there like this, like superheroes. Like they just had some major fucking score. They just brought down El Chapo, Pablo Escobar, whoever. I was caught with a small amount of cocaine, a quarter ounce, seven grams, and a gun that was registered to the girl who was in the car with me. But that's neither here nor there. I went to jail, I began to await the trial process. My lawyer told me I was fucked all the way around. We went to trial, we lost, we went to sentencing. The judge sentenced me to seven and a half years. I was floored. I was expecting 15 or 20 years. But for whatever reason, maybe they felt sorry for me. Maybe they realized there was a small amount of drugs and I had never had any charges like this prior. But my first thought was, oh my God, I'm gonna have a second chance at life here. And then my thought right after that was, but that's not gonna begin for almost a decade. How the hell am I gonna get through this time in prison? Throughout my time in jail while I was awaiting my trial, I was getting in trouble left and right. Tattooing, fighting, constantly going to the hole. I ended up getting in my possession 14 Theraquil pills. When I got these pills, I kept them. I didn't eat them because those pills were my last resort. They were my escape from it all. I literally had thoughts about taking all 14 Seroquel pills an hour before my trial and walking into the courtroom and just hopefully dropping dead. I literally was ready to do that. I was sitting in isolation for getting caught with all sorts of tattoo paraphernalia. With these pills I had smuggled into isolation with me. I was going to eat those pills. But something happened while I was in isolation that would mold how the rest of my time would go. I had been incarcerated at that point for about a year. It was the darkest year of my life. I didn't want to do anything. I was depressed. I felt like life was over. And then in that very moment, I'm in isolation and somebody passes me a book. I'll never forget this for as long as I live. It was called Chicken Soup for the Prisoner's Soul, written by Tom Lagana. And I looked at this book and I read this book. This book literally changed my entire way of thinking of how I was gonna handle this time. Imagine being locked up with absolutely nobody. My family gave up on me. I had no friends. Everybody that I thought was my friends who was supposed to be there because I was keeping it real because I didn't tell, they were gone. They didn't care. They were living their lives. My family had to move on and live their lives. I wasn't mad at my family. I was a little mad at the people I thought were my friends, but it was life. I realized, yo, when you're locked up, nobody cares. Most of the time, you're gonna have to go through that time by yourself. And that was exactly what I was doing. I was depressed. I was in a dark state of mind. I didn't even want to live. I wanted to eat these pills and walk into the courtroom. But then I found this book that somebody had passed me and I'm looking at it and I'm reading the stories of other prisoners who were locked up. And then I'm seeing cartoons that were drawn by prisoners making the best of the worst situation. It was seeing those cartoons in that book, Chicken Soup for the Prisoner's Soul, that changed my life at that very moment. I began drawing cartoons while in isolation. I was an artist, I was doing tattoos, so I started to try to figure out how could I draw prison-related cartoons? How could I try to take something I could create and get it out there to the world in an effort to one, try to better myself, two, give myself something to do while I was locked up and completely alone, some sort of hope, because in prison, hope is like the best possible thing you could have hope for anything and three possibly try to show people that there was a guy who was sitting on almost a decade of time to serve who was going to do everything in his power to try to make his life better that book chicken soup for the prisoner soul is what changed the entire course of my incarceration i literally began creating cartoons every day multiple cartoons sending them to different magazines publications prison newsletters I was sending these cartoons everywhere, getting rejection letters back at the jail, newspapers. But then some people started using my material. And Tom Lagana and me began to correspond, the author of Chicken Soup for the Prisoner's Soul. And this guy motivated me as well. He even got me published in another Chicken Soup book. I literally wrote a story for a Chicken Soup for the Soul book. It's called Chicken Soup for the Soul 20th Anniversary Reader's Choice. And I wrote a story that's published in that book right now called The Tipping Point telling the exact same story that I'm telling all of you right now. From tattoos to cartoons to painting. I began painting pictures in the prison once I got to the prison, all over the walls in a prison. I'm a fucking artist in a prison, painting huge murals all over the walls. I was so inspired by the work that I was doing, so hopeful that, look, I'm doing something positive. My family's gonna see me making these changes. There was hope, and every day I told myself, 
that I'm going to do the most that I can while incarcerated to not only prove to the world but also myself that I can be something better than the drug dealing piece of shit that led me to be in this situation in the first place. From tattoos to cartoons to painting to a website. I created a website while I was in prison called Joe Writes Is Wrong. Now it's called AfterPrisonShow.com but if you go on that website right now you can read stories that I wrote from the times I was incarcerated telling how I wanted to be this better person. It's all documented right there. Crazy stories, funny stories, the most insane stuff you could imagine I was dealing with while in prison as an individual trying to change my life and be someone better in the worst situation possible. From that website came thoughts of when I was released, how I could possibly do YouTube, how I could create videos, maybe entertaining or educational or even funny material that people would latch on to. They would be intrigued and entertained by. They would want to watch. Little did I know at that point that coming home to try to do YouTube at 33 years old was not going to be the easiest task possible. But it's now me being out here in the free world after serving this time that I'm learning to find my foothold in that. I went to prison for selling drugs and for carrying a gun. And as bad as all that sounds, I did the most I could do in an effort to better myself while in that situation that I think anyone could do. See, just because you go to prison doesn't mean you're some fucking murderer, rapist, piece of shit, Brock Turner. There are decent people who get locked up who just make dumb mistakes. I like to think that I was one of those people. Like I said, I may laugh and joke about a lot of things here on After Prison Show, but one thing I'll never take lightly is what led me to be right here in front of all y'all right now. Blessed with the opportunity to have you watching my video. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, please leave a like and a comment. Share this video. You never know it could inspire someone else who could possibly be going through this situation or could be on the road to a situation just like this. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe down below. It's your support that keeps me motivated to keep creating this content. I greatly appreciate I appreciate you for checking out this video. I hope you have a wonderful, blessed day. Enjoy life, the free world, and never take a moment for granted. Until next time, peace!